Welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. Now I love boat fishing, especially from my small boat, High Sea Drifter. And I love catching big sharks from it. And every time I go out shark fishing, I can't help it. I just can't stop fishing for other species as well. Now, one of the ways you can do this is by anchoring. And I'm on a little trip out there. I'm out of the Eastern White area. I'm going for Thresher Shark, big sharks. I mean, they grow to over a thousand pounds. I think in the UK, the biggest one I've seen a photograph of was down off the Isles of Scilly, and I think it was somewhere around 1,100 pounds. Far too big for me and my little 17 foot boat. But listen, I'm out there trying to hook one. Who knows what I'm gonna hook one or not? But I'll give you guys a few tips on it, but you can also enjoy some really good, regular, just basic fishing at the same time you're fishing for sharks. Don't just go for sharks. Go for some other species as well. If the sharks don't show up, whatever. At least you've had a great day's fishing. So what you do, people, is you put out your chum bag or your chum tube, whatever system you're using to get that chum smell rubby-dubby in the water. You're gonna send that back first. The first thing you do is always put the chum in the water. Then you can mess around, you can get rigged up, take your time, because, listen, once a shark smells that chum, He's not going to leave you. Any form of shark, even the rays on the bottom, and indeed a majority of other fish as well, uh, bream, even in foreign countries, snappers, groupers, they're not going to leave that chum, they're not going to leave that smell. It's a food source for them. So you've got your food source working for you while you tackle up. You put your shark line out, you get it set. I've only got one shark line, I'm on my own. Two shark lines could be a catastrophe, a nightmare. I'd love to get two sharks at once on my own. It's liable to any disaster. But what I'm going to do, just to perk things up, is I'm fishing, and I've got big rods, I'm not going sport fishing. You never know when a shark might pick a bait off the bottom. When we go to places like the Florida Keys, anywhere else, one of other different countries, they are, those big sharks will come in and they'll pick baits off the bottom. You never know what's there. I'm just experimenting here. I'm going to use my big rods here. This is a IGFA 12 pound Fennec stick. Uh, it's customised for me. It's got roller guides there, double butt roller, single butt roller there. That reduces friction. The idea, in case some people don't know, big game fishing, you get fast running fish. That creates a lot of friction across the rings on the line. So imagine a fish like a wahoo, a blue marlin, a big yellowfin tuna. It's screaming, man, it's on fire. All that friction suddenly stops in one spot. As soon as the fish stops running, melts the line, weakens it, gone. That is the theory, and that's the theory behind roller guides, is that these are AFCO rollers. The rolling motion stops any friction. And most big game rods, to be honest, when they've got a lot of pressure on a big rod, do actually have roller guides. So, all I'm fishing with are these tiny little booms. We got them on the website, I think. They're brilliant. They just give you a nice clip to put your lead on. I've then got a swivel, but if you'll notice something, I don't believe anybody. Well, I guess I have tried it before. They must have done me fishing. I got here 80 pound mono back up here too. I think it's a 6 0 uh, eagle claw, a short as he hook. He says, looking for other bites on the bottom of there's a bite. I have to do this one quickly. I've got a three way swivel there because it's a fishing slope. I can tie a little short hook off here, just about that length, with a small piece of squid strip and see if I can pick bream up another small fish. If the bigger fish aren't biting, I have got a bite on that one actually. I'm going to bait up here because the area I'm in, the, oh, this is an experimental day, so bear in mind I don't really know what I'm doing. Just a frozen hardback crab. A 6 0 goes right through the middle. Look, ooh, ooh, can't pitch me. He can't now, his legs drop, his, his, his claws dropped off. It's just straight frozen hard back there. If I go straight through the middle of him, I just leave him like that. I'm going to cut off the head of a squid and I'm just going to thread that round. I don't want a massive bait because don't forget, sharks are what I'm after, thresher shark. And really, this is just a pass of time. And the illusion being, along comes any bottom feeding fish and they think, oh my god, here we go. <laughs> Tugging away, it's probably a dogfish. They think that this crab's feeding on the squid. That's my theory. That's my theory, just a theory, but it could work. So I'm going to run these rods down and I'm throwing them back. I've got one chum tube on the bottom and I've got my bag of 
Wow, well, it's disgusting stuff. I don't even want to tell you what it is on the top. Lob this one out, sit back, and relax. The rod I'm using for Thresher Shark is a 50 wide Triton trolling reel. It's got 50 pound IGFA tournament line on it, and the rod is a Calstar stand up stick. The other rods are just regular, well, I suppose you call them an average of 30 pound boat rods. They're quite heavy, you know, considering the size of species I'm going to be going for. The 50 wide is there just for the Thresher Shark should it come along. So, time to sit back, relax, chill out and let that ground bait do the work. Trapped in space. Now, this is exactly what I mean. This is exactly what I mean. A hard back crab, frozen, absolutely cost me nothing. I'm waiting for a thresher shark and I've got a sharky type species, little species in the shape of very nice smooth hound. He's just hanging there, I'll try and get him up for you, show you. Got a bite on the other one as well. So, whoa, camera's about to go over. It's so rough, I can't tell you. You have to be careful with everything. Me, the fish, the camera. Definitely a bite on the other one, here we go. Might come off. And the camera might go over as well. Oh, help. Use my little unhooking tool here. Now look, I'm still shark fishing guys, I've still got the shark line out there, and it looks like I might even get another fish as well. If I ever get the out of this one. There we go. Oh, he's so strong! There we go, that is a nice double figure smooth hound. Maybe not, maybe it go about nine, I would guess, like that. But that's a bonus fish for me. And I'm still waiting for the sharks. I may even have one on the other rod. Let's get this one back. The shark line's still back there. No move, I've got another fish on this one. The yacht sort of bearing down on me. Hopefully he can see me. You can certainly see him. You know we yachtsmen a lot of the time they might have a sail in the way or they just might not be watching. Another sharky species is not a thresher shark, it's the dogfish. So that's two species I've had while waiting for a shark. Only a dogfish, but it's saving the blank. I'm getting a bit of sport. I'm still shark fishing. And if that 50 wide reel starts singing, all hands to the pumps, I really will be in trouble. Okay, so threshers are they're scent feeders, which is why I've got the chum out, but they're also highly visual feeders. And I believe, put my foot on that tripod, I believe anything you can put in the water to visually attract any shark indeed, has got to be a bonus. Now this is one of my secrets, and of course all the air these superhero people, they're going to be copying it like you wouldn't believe in any claim it as their own. I don't believe they've even seen these. This will be known by Canadians, as a salmon flasher. You get your rod, you fish it from a downrigger, I've just got some cording on the end of here, you tie your uh, rod top line to this, you tie a trace from the back, the fat end of it, about whoa, six feet long, and you fish something called a hoochie, or indeed any small lure, and this will go round flashing, but in a big circle. So generally it will be used for trolling. In this case, again, I'm taking benefit. I'm, I'm going to make the tide work for me. I've got a weight on the back, and this will. You'll see this in the camera. Can you see this? It's flashing both sides. Split. I saw a split colour on this side. So, believe me, if this is just doing this underwater, any shark, indeed any predator, for some distance around, especially in foreign waters where it's clear, they're going to see that just there. I'll put it over the side, I'll run it back about 20 feet. Always, always remember to take it in when you just go home because you don't want the line, you don't want all that calling around your prop. It's not good. Now you can see this salmon flasher underneath the water. If you look at that under the water when the sun catches it, it fires out 
an immense blast of sunlight. Now, not so good on cloudy days, obviously, but I don't see any reason why this doesn't attract big sharks like the thresher. When you're fishing with heavier rods, you've really got to be aware of the different pressure you're putting on. You don't want to tear the hooks out, you don't want to straighten the hook. Just take your time. I'm not going sporting fishing, I really want the thresher on the big rod. In the meantime, I'm having a great time, I just want to catch a few fish. A smooth out. On that bait, grab and squid, 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 grab and squid cocktail. The way the fish is going, I'll be having a cocktail myself. Oh, not a bad fish, guys. guys I'm almost sure it's the chum tube on the bottom and there's every chance I might actually get a shark run because if these guys are homing in they use scent smell as well to locate there's a good chance something else might come along. Right here we are again guys over to the camera to pull over before I was rudely interrupted by that smooth hound and several dogfish get yourself a piece of polyprop rope Get yourself an old onion sacks like this. You fill them up with your mashed up fish and pilchard oil if you want to use it. We use raptor oil we can make ourselves. Mash it all up. Oh, this is one and a half years old. It's been in the dustbin, but I don't put the brand in it at that stage. I only put the fish in the dustbin, pour a load of salt over it, put the lid on and run away for one and a half years. And when you come back, hopefully the smell's gone, but the oil hasn't. And if I put this in the sea and I shake it up, I should be able to show you, especially on a windy day like this, all the oil coming out of this. Hey, sharky, sharky, sharky. You've got to shake the bag, guys. If you don't shake the bag, it will clog up. And you want all those particles of bread. He says, listen to a click of the reel. You want all those particles of black brad percolating down tide. Now you can drift the thresher, which will be a standard way. And as I said earlier, this is, I've just given this a try, trying to send this chum trail right the way down through past that memory bank and down through the gap in the channel where the sandbanks and the roof, well, it's not reef, it's more sandbars than anything, but it's a channel of water. So I'm using the tide to distribute the chum. The other thing I'm using, got it all the way down there. This is really primarily for the bottom fishing. I've used this sort of thing in Florida when I'm out fishing on the reef for black tip sharks because I want to smell down near the bottom. And that is a chum tube. It's a piece of pipe that's drilled out with a big two pound lead on the bottom. And I just drop that down. You can pump it up and down and that, woo, nearly, don't tell Michael, nearly went. And that should attract the bottom feeding fish. Don't forget to allow for the rise and fall of the tide. So if the tide is making, it's flooding, the boat's going to gradually get higher in the water, that's going to be lifted off the bottom. Equally, if the tide is falling, that could be all slack on the body, you might get snagged up, you might lose it. So every now and then, it might pay you to drop a bit out or put a bit back in. I think I'd better move the camera up before it gets knocked over. More fish, please. Even though I'm waiting for that big reel to take off and that ratchet to scream, there's always other things to do on the boat, especially when you're fishing alone. Yeah, I know, I know. It's a problem I've always had. I just can't get enough and now I've got two fish hooked up at once. What on earth am I going to do? It's a factor of life for me. Graham Pullen fishing on my own, filming on my own, in a boat, I can't help it, I go into some weird zone and I start sticking rods out for this and rod out for that. And if I've got a gap over there, why don't we put a rod down for that? I've always liked experimenting. You pay a terrible price for it. 
you have to wind all these fish in. See now this is something that really sort of bothers me when I'm fishing alone, is these yachtsmen. They just come steaming towards you, I'm at anchor, I'm obviously fishing, they've got the entire ocean, but they have to use me for target practice. I'll just show you, he's coming straight for me, I hope he, he has seen me. Why, when they've got the entire ocean, do they have to come close to me? Do you know what is, I think they actually use us, they think we're a little boy and they're playing games, you know, yachties, little yachty games. I'm sure, I'm sure that's what it is. There's no, there's no reason, there's 145,000 miles to the South Atlantic that way and four miles or so that way. Right, let's go as close to that little fishing boat as we can. Beyond me. But I can't moan because behind me I've seen out the corner of my eye another bite. Once those fish home in on the scent trail, you can catch them pretty well one after the other, even two at a time. And don't forget, all these fish, every single fish I caught, are released. A great day to be out in the water and look at this smooth house stripping off line from a 30 pound rod with a drag up, braid pouring out. I mean, fishing alone, filming alone, not many people do that in a small boat, is there? I do the best I can to bring you guys a bit of action, a few tips, how to do it on techniques, and do you know what? I even make sure the sun comes out as well. I mean, what a man. people I'm catching just hound after hound these smooth hounds have got honed in and I've just got another one on here onto that smell of that chum tube and the uh, chum bag I've got another bucket to get through yet this feels like a really really good fish and it's weird you know you fish light tackle and you don't get it but I'm fishing heavy tackle I'm not really fishing for this speed and I'm having a blinding day I think I've got one bumping away on the other bait as well. Pretty heavy, he's either wrapped up by the tail. He's gone dead on me, which is quite unusual for a hound, because they're normally they're kicking and thrashing. Maybe he's wrapped up. I'm hoping I haven't got another line. Wow, he's heavy now. The closer I've got into the boat, the heavier he's got. And these are on 20 to 30 pound shark rods. I can see a bit of colour down there now. Looks like different grey. Actually, I think it might be a ray, it might be a thornback ray. It's upside down, he's coming up upside down. White. Yeah, definitely a ray. Let's turn it over. Oh my god, I think it's a big. I think it might be an undulate. Won't turn over. I'm pretty sure that's an undulate ray. I'm we'll trying to get the lead off. I don't want to smack around the ear with a 10 ounce lead. Take a look at this guy. Big thorn but really unusual markings. Take a look at this with the old underwater guy.
there he goes. I've just got my finger on it and, it and his teeth wore through the trace, but I got the picture of it right by the boat here. So we check it out. Big thornback ray. Wow. What a session. I'll never be able to wind a shark in if I get a run now anyway. Whew. By this stage of the day, my head is total mush. I've got the chum on the bottom, I've got chum on the top, I've got fish all over the seabed, painfully obvious around me, attracted and drawn in by that chum. I've always been a lover of it. Mash fish, get it down there, whatever you can, chop it up, get it in the water. It all helps you attract species around your boat. I can't help it, I've always been like that. And look at the action I'm having. Boy, oh boy. Can you imagine the footage we could have got with a real camera crew on the boat? I oh, know, it wouldn't have got much more than me really, there's not enough space on the boat. Listen, you get fish like big smooth hounds, there's no reason to kill them. I personally let them all go. I have never killed a smooth hound. They probably are good eating fish, look. I'm not saying you can't eat them. In some countries, they probably form part of the diet. But here in the UK, they don't form part of my diet. I like to put them away. There's enough pressure from commercial netsmen with the smooth hound. I don't think there is any additional pressure by the anglers killing them. I'm grateful to catch them and here on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show, we try to put as many fish back as we can. Well guys, I've got to sit down. I've had nine nice big smooth hounds. That big, I guess it must have been 10 or 11 pound thornback ray. I haven't even bothered putting small hooks down because I get pestered by too many small fish, I feel. Because they're going to move in on that chump tail as well. Now the tide's dying generally get a six hour tide cycle and that's what I wanted when I explained earlier I wanted to go all across Medbury Bank and straight down the channel what they call Boulder Gate right through that channel that was my general idea now the tide obviously swings around a bit so it's going to push it possibly outside the banks might even go inside more towards that uh, Celsiusville area but when you think the tide is finished so it's no good no, never do that. Always give it at least an hour over slack water because I've had plenty of pool eagle sharks at anchor from an anchor boat would have been bottom fishing as well and shallow water, 60 feet, 90 feet, something like that, right down as shallow as 40 feet over slack water because the chum will then sink, you know, deeper. And don't forget, it's like one big railway line all that way there. As the tide stops, that smell is still hanging in the water. So if there is a thresher, Got to get lucky, but hey ho, I'm here trying. They still got a chance of coming up. So I'm going to give it at least another hour as the tide dies. Yes, the chances are sliding away, but look at the fish I've had. Illustrated, I haven't been bottom fishing to the detriment of a thresher shark. All I would have to do was quickly crank up those other lines, and I'm only in shallowish water here, and then I could slip the anchor rope and I could go off after the thresher if I did hook one. So there you are. You can try, I try to lose the camera then. You can try and get a shark yourself, poor wiggles, blues, I have blue sharks at anchor as well, or a thresher shark. Give it a go. And that was nearly the camera. Give it a go, and you can see you can have some great fishing as well. Quits there because I feel that the camera's about to go over. Oh, here we go. I'm going to turn the camera around, guys. Oh, there we go. Middle of our fish on. Marlin, Marlin, Marlin. Oh, that just illustrates what I told you. Don't neglect that dead tide period at all. Oh, right on camera. There's not many fishing shows do that, I don't think, is there really? All genuine, all filmed on my own. No big fancy camera crew there. One guy, one boat, one camera. One rod, two rods, five rods. When you get fish, make sure they don't go around that flash that I've got going down there, because that's really whipping around there. Oh, 
Yeah. There we go. Thus, end of the lesson. Have a go sharp fishing. If you get some chum on the bottom, you can get some great bottom fishing as well. Oh, Right, it's just about to pack up. I just picked the rod up, the tide is gone. It's just starting to run the other way. Just got an absolute dead weight. Well, actually just dozing off in the chair. The clouds come over. I'm thinking, is this bad weather or not? It's absolutely dead. I've no idea what it is. There's a quite big head shaking early on. And now it's just a dead weight. I don't think I've got any other lines at all. Sharp line's gone back there now. What the hell is this? really big bangs when I first lifted it off the bottom. I'm guessing a ray. Who knows though? See if we can get this one out without falling off. Station calling Southern Coast Guard. This is Southern Coast Guard. You are weak but readable. There we go guys. I'm not weak. He might be weak. I am smoking and on fire. Somebody get the fire engine. There's some tips for you for catching sharks, like thresher sharks. If you want to sit out there and wait for them, sooner or later a big shark's going to come along. In the meantime, you're having some great action with that ground bait, that chum, the fish attractor there. Get out there, give it a go. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. And don't forget, check out Mike's sister channel, the Totally Awesome Outdoor Show. If you like the outdoors of the country, there might be a few films on there to keep you interested. I'll see you next time, and maybe... We'll get one of those sharks on the boat.